Hey everyone, welcome back. The holiday is finished. It was good, it was fun. But I'm all scratching to get back. Yeah. I get the hoobie jubies. Let's get back. Let's get on it. Now, how are you all going? Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Where whatever time it is, wherever you are. Some of you are abroad. Good. Morning, morning, afternoon, and evening. You guys are traveling as much as me. Good to see, good to hear. So today. Uh, I want to talk about, obviously, we've got two months until the end of the year. However, it's really sort of seven weeks or whatever until the end of the year, which is kind of pre-Christmas, right? Um, because nobody does a lot between sort of Christmas and the end of the new year. So I want to cover off that today. And the final push that we need to do and some tweaking and whatever it might be to sort the business out. I also want to share some insights from Airbnb and you can get these insights as well. And I'll give you the link for those. It's basically via Airbnb's um, website. So we're going to do that. And some interesting, very interesting information in there about why people book Airbnb and how they book and all those type of things. So we've covered a lot previously about booking.com and Airbnb is actually quite different. So I want to make sure that obviously we're not just looking at Air, the booking.com, we're also looking at Airbnb. And you'll be glad to know those operating in Wales, it's had a massive, like I'm talking 82% increase in tourism booked via Airbnb. So I don't know if it's because the bridge is now free or what, or because Wales is just a stunning place. Um, but, yeah, you can read more into that. So that's that's good news. It's very good news. So morning, afternoon, and evening again to those around the world. Wow, we've got a real international community, huh? Well, travellers. Good, good. Wales, Wales, Wales. I was trying to say that Sunday. Uh, but anyway. It didn't work. Well done. So let's kick off. So let's start with, let's go through the Airbnb stuff before we cover off the, the bit at the end about what happens next with the, the surge for the, um, the end of the year, if you like. Okay. And little techniques that we can use. So, uh, Okay, I'll share my screen. That might be the best thing to do to help you see what I'm looking at. Now, I'll put this out on the group so you can all see it and you can all read it. And some of you um, may, may have done that. Okay. So, uh, where are we? Sharing. Just let me know that you can see the screen, please. If you could. Just a yes. Perhaps not. Okay, here, now, now I'll do it. Dana, Dana, share. Hmm. One moment while I just check this. Usually works. It always works. So for those, obviously get some questions, plug in some questions while you're just waiting for me to do this. And uh, we can go from there. Okay. Technicalities. All right. Let's try again. If 
for whatever reason, I can't share my screen today. So what I'm going to talk about is it's a report from um, Airbnb Citizen. Airbnb, C-I-T-I-Z-E-N dot com. And it's basically uh, an insight report from 2018. So it's it's fairly, it's the most recent, obviously, because they can't do a 2019 report. And it's about Airbnb and hosting. And this one is specifically for uh, the UK, UK Insights. You can get European ones, you get Chinese ones, you get US ones, EMEA, whatever you want. But obviously, because we're here in the UK, this is more UK focused. So you can get that report. I'll put the link now into the box, into the question box, so you can actually see it and perhaps follow along. For those who haven't already downloaded it from the group. So you should have that there now, right? Good. So why am I looking at these insights? Well, it's very, very good information. In fact, you know, I look at a lot of these type of things and, and some of them are just hashed and rehashed shit. And this one's actually quite good because it actually does come from Airbnb itself. Now you'll see on there that there are some awesome photos as well. And some of those photos are from um, sort of uh, Airbnb plus hosts, uh, which means that their properties get seen a lot more. And I can tell you now that some of you on here have properties that look like this, if not even better. So that should be an inspiration to you in itself because some of your properties should be on here, if that makes sense. So what does it tell us? We can go through all the executive summary and all that type of stuff. And it's written mainly by the European uh, head of operations for Airbnb. But just in the UK alone, some of the stats, the economic impact, if you like, 854 million pounds is the income earned by the local households in the UK. And I'm sure by the end of 2019 this year, that will be into the billion pound mark. Now that is growing, growing, growing exponentially. Now, for those of you who think that, oh, it's saturated here, it's saturated there. Things are not saturated. However, what you do have, in my own opinion, is you have you have the true hosts, the true professionals, and then you have the try-hard wannabes who don't get trained and don't get educated and don't understand the service accommodation market in its own right, don't work on the business. They just think, yeah, we'll plug it in, it will play. That's okay for software, but it's not okay for our industry because our industry changes every time that people get up and wake up and decide that they want to do something different or experience something different. So just to clarify on that, customer expectations are the highest they've ever been for anything that they buy, for anything. And if those expectations are not met, i.e. they're expecting something that they're buying from the photos and they get there, and the expectation is not what they expected, i.e. the experience is not what you are portraying, then you're going to get marked down heavily on your reviews. That's the way it goes. Um, if you have a property that, that's a bit shabby and needs a bit of a facelift, it's going to come out in your reviews. If you have a property that looks amazing, i.e., wow, the photos don't do it justice, then you need to, number one, do better photos. 
and number two, quickly replicate that model because that's going to get you business. Now, with Airbnb, they talk about also the, the inbound guests in the past year. This is the for 2018. This is inbound guests just staying in Airbnb. This is not booking.com. This is not Expedia. This is not any other channel. This is just Airbnb. 8.4 million guests in 2018. And then they talk about the, the economic activity generated by hosts and guests on Airbnb. This is not just the money that comes in, because obviously that's the income earned, 854 million. They talk about three and a half billion pounds because it, you know, it brings in tourism money. And, and on an average, from what I remember, is each Airbnb, Airbnb guest spends an average, not on the room or the, the property, they spend an average of a hundred pound per day in the local area, whether it be on food, drink, clothing, transport, or whatever it might be. Now that's huge. Now that will help us when we're talking about justifying that to landlords who may have in the back of their head that, you know, oh, they want to they want to have a sustainable property and they in all this they'll come up with all the bullshit in the world and they talk about sustainability and tourism sustainability and, and whatever it might be. But basically, if you get down to the logic crux of it, they want to make sure that they're doing the right thing with their property and helping the community, i.e. they think they should be renting to other people. But by renting to us, we are actually improving the community by the local spend. Make sense? And we're actually giving them, obviously, a far better um, solution for their property because... If you look at some of the photos of what you guys have got, some of the properties you've got, they look like that day in, day out, no matter what. If I were to go and inspect some of my properties now, and I've just finished refurbing one, which cost me just shy of 20 grand, fair play, I haven't spent any money on it in 12 years. But if if I if that was a service accommodation property, I wouldn't be refurbing it now. I may be changing you know, some soft furnishings, the furniture and that type of stuff, but it wouldn't be costing me, you know, 19 grand or whatever it was because you're getting constant inspections and this is how we sell it to our landlords. And, you know, I'm, I've been speaking to a couple of landlords of late for students and I showed them that example and the videos of the property that I've had for, might be 13, 14 years, I've had that now. The guest was in there for 12 years. Um, sorry, the tenant. And I showed him that video. I just sent him the video. I didn't didn't speak about it. And I said, look, here's a property that I've had for however many years. And this is what it looked like three months ago. And this is what it looks like today. And it cost me 19 grand. However, if you're going to accept us as a tenant to run service accommodation, then here are the photos of what the properties looked like three, four years ago. And here are photos of what it looks like today. And as you can see, they actually look better than what it was then. And my simple question is at the bottom, let me know your preference and we can move forwards, i.e. I made an assumption that his preference is going to be ours. What did he say? No problem. What do we do now? Let's move forward. So you can use all of this and use your experience from other areas of property, if you have it, or other areas in your life. But make sure everything is logical because logic you can't bullshit logic if that makes sense so you can see also if you're looking through the document hosts active listings in the uk 223,200 to the end of uh, 2018 and they're saying that the typical host earns 3,100 and how many nights a year that's 36 nights it's roughly 85 86 quid or whatever it is per night that they're earning. Now that's your average typical host, typical. We are not your average typical host, are we? No, because we are doing this professionally and we are making far more profit than what these people are making because still the majority of properties on Airbnb are people renting out their room or, or their garden shed or their caravan or the boat or whatever it is for the night, for two nights and that type of thing. Um, because that's what Airbnb started out as. And Airbnb are investing hundreds of millions 
to change that perception. And you'll read that in the report. So they talk about total inbound guests as 8.4 million, average length of stay, which is really good, 3.1 nights. That's fantastic for us. That's where we make the profit, right? And, and our costs drop. Then you talk about outbound guests, which is 11.1 .1 million. However, the outbound guests, it's, it's for people choosing Airbnb when they leave. However, an outbound guest, as you'll read in the report, also contributes to UK because if I'm going from my house now and I'm going to go and stay in London, I'm an outbound guest and it equates to an inbound guest. Silly stats, but that's the way they put it together. Now, the entire home listings have gone up substantially. Private rooms account for, private rooms as in your typical people up the top there, is 41%. Your entire home is now 58%, and the other margin that's made up is stuff like boats and tents or whatever it might be. Good? So huge flexibility with Airbnb. Now, for those out there, whether you're male or female, this may surprise you, is that the gender of the host, 61% are female, 39% are male. And we have a probably a good 50-50 mix on the mentoring of female and male. So we're probably up there with the stats. The number of people staying is around about 2.5, which again, 2.5 people over 3.1 nights, that's a very high profitable area for us because we're getting that extra person, the 0.5, and we're getting that over the extra two or three nights. Now, they also talk in here about the reason people choose Airbnb and not booking.com and not TripAdvisor and that type of thing is because they have a perception that they want to live like a local. So what's live like a local? Live like a local means that you want to experience the local area. And for the guys who have got properties in Bath and you've got the nice old Grand Jura things, that's, that's living like a local, albeit a wealthy local. Um, but it's living like a local. You know, properties that we've got, uh, that Tony, Tony has like the, um, the, the, uh, the converted period style homes or the, the old cottages, that perception is living like a local for people who don't know the UK because they look at pictures, they look at, you know, maps or, or stuff of um, old London homes or old country style homes like in the Cotswolds or whatever it might be. And they want to live in, they want to stay in those type of properties. They don't want to be staying in a modern flat and that type of thing. London is completely different. But living like a local outside of London, 78% choose that experience. So what did I take from that? Again, you can look at that and think to yourself, is it just a property? No, it's not just a property. It's about your soft furnishings and how you furnish the property as well. There's no use having a beautiful old period style home and shoving in a load of fusion furniture. It ain't going to work. You know, it's like turning up to a ball in your jeans and T-shirt. It just ain't going to happen. Last thing you want to do is turn up in a ball dress to the football game. <clears throat> I've seen it. So it also states that 70% of guests on Airbnb visit the UK for <clears throat> pardon me, holiday and leisure, not for business. Whereas Airbnb is around about half and half. Uh, sorry, Booking.com is around about half an hour, slightly more weighted towards towards business. So 70% of guests on Airbnb visit the UK for holiday and leisure. So Airbnb could be your, your key point that you should be looking at for the leisure traveler. Maybe it's start testing that there's more focus on the holiday and leisure on Airbnb, as in the way you write it up, but still mention business. Yeah, it may be that, you know, we also open up for, for you know, single nights or whatever it might be. I need to think about it more for the business traveler. 
So if you are obviously in a business area, then you don't really want to focus too much on the tourism stuff, as in like if you're in Reading. However, for a real tourist area, Bath, Oxford, Cambridge, York, you know, all of these other destinations, even Manchester and Liverpool for tourists, you need to start thinking maybe have a look at my Airbnb listing and think, how does it focus? And again, that might not just be the write up, it might be the way that you've got the photo set up. Now, for people that want to live uh, as a local, for me, we need to do more focus on the photos. And I'm, I'm going to look at our listings and think, right, where, where can, how can we paint the picture visually with photos? And the same for the guys in Windsor. How can we paint this picture visually to show people who um, don't speak English and don't understand where they're really staying and may have never visited Windsor before? How can we make that visually, you know, make the property look like you're living in a lo living like a local? So it could be that you have, you know, pictures up inside of the local area, but not just an old picture like you know, something from Range or Argos or whatever, something that's nicely framed. You don't have to spend a lot of money on the frames, but you just need to get the interior. I mean, interior design, I always talk about it, you know, and it's well worth the investment. And you should be looking at interior design. Even if it's just to say, look, I want, I want the pictures to show. I want to be able to photograph this property to make people from China or the US who've never visited here think that's where I want to stay. That looks like a, an English house that, that depicts Windsor, Oxford, Cambridge, whatever it might be. That's where I'd want to stay. That looks like a nice, comfortable place to stay. If it's going to be fusion furniture, that's going to have to be business stuff. So for me, my recommendation is fusion furniture should only be for business properties in your Reading areas and that type of thing. Um, I spoke a little bit about Airbnb Plus. So Airbnb Plus, if you go on to go into that document, you'll see Airbnb Plus. So they say it's a selection of a new selection of beautiful homes verified for quality and comfort. <clears throat> now, it might sound like a load of bollocks. However, if you look at the photos in there and, and James and Lindsay and, and um, and Sarah and Chili and um, Vincenzo and Claudia uh, and and um, Alex. These these photos, you know, are what you are about. So I would be pushing for the Airbnb Plus if you don't already have it. Now it says here in their report that plus homes are nine times, yes, nine times more likely to be seen by guests. Plus hosts are earning, wait for this, 75% more on average than other listings. Airbnb Plus is currently available in London and Edinburgh. So it may be that you don't have it available in cities outside of London, but check because this is a 2018 report. I'm going to be checking because, you know, I want to be looking at, at what we can do. But for Vincenzo in London, check that you're on Airbnb Plus. If you're not, check how you get onto it. It's going to be based a lot around reviews, that's for sure. Good. Uh, okay. So Air, Airbnb guest preferences. This is a big one. And this is going to take work for you to maintain or even get to this if you're not at this level. And when I say a lot of work, you can turn this around in the next month if you're not at this level. In the next quarter, I would say, because it may be that you need to be um, verified and up there. So it says that the Airbnb guest preferences, the properties that they choose 
are an average host rating of 4.8 out of 5. So if you're below 4.8 and you're wondering why you're not getting as many listings as you did on Airbnb, as many bookings, then you need to up the game. And this is working on your business to make sure you're in the right threshold, i.e. up around the 4.8, 4.95s. So the best, the biggest number here, or the most surprising for me, is that 89% of guests who travel on Airbnb, they choose that property because of the amenities. So what does that mean? Well, if you've got a coffee machine in your property but you haven't ticked coffee machine, make sure you tick it. Because what people are saying is, I want a true home from home, i.e. live like a local experience. So you need to make sure you've got as many of those amenities ticked as you possibly can. Look, if you don't have a swimming pool, you don't have a swimming pool. You don't have a spa, you don't have a spa. However, every other little thing like coffee machine, you know, if if they might one day bring in bloody bread maker, stick bread maker in there. Um, and this this is again something that, and please don't spread it, that I'm thinking about putting in. Now, think about this before you execute me bread makers what do bread makers do they make bread yes now what you can do is it may not be the best quality bread in the world and I suggest you make a, a white loaf and use 500 grams of flour put in two two or three teaspoons of of yeast, bit of salt, bit of sugar for the flavor. I'm not telling you how to make bread here. That's not the whole point. And you put in 300 ml of warm water. Otherwise it deactivates or doesn't activate the yeast. Now, <clears throat> how do I know this? Because I've been looking at this because I want to put these into the properties. <clears throat> now, what you can do is it's going to be some work that you're going to have to put a cleaner in there or whatever. And you might not have to do it on every single stay. However, <clears throat> if you've got people coming in, there, there are two things that, that people, that good estate agents do to sell a house. What they will do, they will get there an hour early, they will have bread baking, and they will have coffee on the pot. Why? Well, I'll tell you why. Because when people walk in, you imagine when you walk into a into a into a into a house and somebody's baking bread, i.e., it's baking. The aroma is like, wow, someone's baking bread or cakes, or and perhaps you smell coffee. Wow, it gives that it 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 appeals to the senses that. You're, you're somewhere that's making you feel comfortable. You're fucked if you don't drink coffee, but hey, that's why we do the bread as well. Um, and if you're if you're on the Atkins diet and you don't drink coffee, we're knackered. But we're going for the majority here, right? Not the minority. So if you have a bread maker, think of this. And it takes about an hour and a half for the bread to, to finalise, like to, to finish, shall I say the whole cycle so you put the bread maker in all you got to do is tip in the flour tip in the water tip in the yeast put in the salt put in the sugar boom hit hit go and it will knead itself and within an hour and a half you can leave a nice note in your property please please don't spread this shit around leave a nice note in your property that says Welcome to Bath, Cambridge, London, wherever it might be. Just to let you know, we've baked you some fresh bread. So much nicer than just shoving in a loaf of bread. Because even if they don't eat bread, they walk in a... Whoa. Now, if you've got a coffee machine, you don't put the coffee on. But, you know, you can leave the cups out, buy the coffee machine and the butter or whatever it is 
and I, I would leave, you know, margarine and just leave it in there, or just a small pot because I may not use it all. And you could just do this for the stays that are the three or four or five nights long because you know they're, that they're going to be living there. And if they want to use the bread maker again, print off some simple instructions, boom, there it is. Or tell them to ask Alexa, Alexa, I'm using, I could go on in a minute. I'm using Bread Maker by Panasonic. Alexa, by Panasonic. Um, quick instructions to bake white loaf. Bum 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 bum. Well, what you could do is leave a couple of those little ready-made packets. They tip it in, add water, job's done. One second. Alexa, off. She never listens to me. So is that a good idea? Think about it. A bread maker is like, like 40, 50 quid or something. It's a good investment. Um, okay. It also says around tourism that 78% of people choose to travel on Airbnb because they want to explore a neighborhood. You want to be nice and close to where, this helps you with your location, to what they want to explore. Twenty-nine percent of guests who would not have who would not have come or not have stayed as long if they weren't using Airbnb. I.e., you get a good home from home experience. You know, some people might say, "I didn't want to leave," but I tell you what, you spend five, six, seven days in a hotel. You're like, "Oh man, I'm Mr. Um Good. So where they where they're spending the extra money when they talk when I spoke about the hundred pounds a day that they're spending in the UK, thirty three percent of that is spent on food. That doesn't include groceries because groceries are ten percent. Shopping eighteen percent. Cultural, as in visiting um, museums and that type of stuff, fifteen percent. Leisure eight percent. Transport fourteen percent. So it's a great it's a great um, graphic as well when you look at that document to show landlords and that type of stuff. And they talk about Airbnb sustainability and all the, the bullshit wanky words that basically they're just, you know, we have the government, the government loves us. Uh, they talk in there about events and, and for work and that type of stuff. Um, and it, they talk about here, Airbnb for work, travelers from the UK travel most to London. So when they're in the UK, this is local travelers, they're traveling to London. Listen to this one, guys, Bristol, Edinburgh, and then they also go to Paris, obviously on the train, and Birmingham. So that's where business travelers are traveling most to. Airbnb for work travelers coming to the UK arrive from London, Again, Londoners are traveling out. They travel from Edinburgh, Bristol, Manchester, and Birmingham. So you can see there's a massive local business travel environment, if you like. Top countries traveling to the UK with Airbnb for work. Again, number one is the UK. Number two, the Americans. Number three, the French. Number four, Germany. And number five, Australia. So it could be that you start thinking to yourself, right, focus on these particular countries as in perhaps, you know, US, they're going to like their, you know, maybe big cups, big mugs for their coffee and that type of stuff. But then the UK guys might like their little tea cups. So think, you've got to think about these things. The people traveling from France, perhaps, you know, put in a French stick or something like that. I don't know. It's something that we have to think about. And as you can see, we're constantly thinking, how do we stay ahead of our competitors? And I can tell you this now, the majority of your competitors out there will not be around in 12 months. Yep, I said that. They won't be around in 12 months because they didn't follow the core system. They didn't look at... <clears throat> the central to your targeted area. They didn't look about operations and how, how simplistic it can be or how tough it can be. They didn't look at the availability, the realty, the properties in the area. And in 
just about all of those cases where they won't be in 12 months, they don't think about the experience. Now, when I talk about the experience, the experience is the number one thing that you need to be thinking about. Number one. Because of all these things that Airbnb are talking about, and this is this is a global company now worth in excess of $30 billion, they talk about the experience. That's what we talk about. They even launched their own section called Experiences. And it says here since its launch in 2016, experiences on Airbnb have helped travelers immerse themselves in local communities by offering one-of-a-kind experiences. Now, what will that one-of-a-kind experience be? Well, one thing, part of the experience is we have a bread maker that creates that, that warmth, that smell, and starts to, you know, they see it, they hear it, they smell it. Can't hear bread, but you have to get it close. But you know what I mean. You're trying to appeal to people's senses. And if you appeal to their senses and they feel comfortable and the beds are nice, the linen's nice, the pillows are fresh, they're not lumpy, you know, and it's clean and it smells good, they're going to want to keep coming back, coming back, coming back. But if you just let it rot and let it start to stink and stuff gets cuffed, scuffed and things get burnt and you leave them there, you're short of cutlery and plates are broken or glasses, there's four glasses, it should be six, you haven't replaced them, you're not monitoring it. And you can do that quite simplistically through your channel manager like Tuki, whatever you're using, by getting the cleaner to revert back and use a login to say, look, here's the check-in, there's, there's only four glasses, can we get another two? Bang, I'll get two glasses in. Or you have a storage area where you have those extra ones. That's why IKEA is good for glasses because, you know, you're not going to go out of trend. Good, makes sense? I knew it would. Um, good, 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 good. Okay, there's a lot more stuff there, but it's not stuff that I need to go through. They talk about some uh, some additional houses wish lists that you should have created already. Just if you haven't got it, we don't have time today, but go and search wish list and create your wish list. They've also got breakdowns of regions. Wales is in there. The region of Wales has seen an 81% year on year, i.e. an 81% increase from 2018, from 2017 to 2018, growth in inbound guest arrivals. Good. I think it's freaking awesome. The Northeast, 75% year on year. West Midlands, 70% year on year. East Midlands, which is up where I am, Stanford and that, 80% year on year. Northern Ireland, 70% year on year. There is growth out there. There is enough for us and many, many more to do this. But you've got to be doing it right. You've got to be thinking business, business, business. Good. Talks about economic activity, but we won't go through that now. So let's finish. Let's finish there. Because I know there's going to be lots of questions. Okay, so Alex, good. Mate, you will you will piss it in, excuse my language, on getting an Airbnb plus property in Cardiff. One hundred percent. <laughs> Luca can have it. Good, 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 good. Da, 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 da. Okay, so if you have a focus on corporate, fantastic. However, if your corporate has three or four days or a week where you're not full, why wouldn't you fill that with perhaps a high-end paying customer? Don't put all your eggs in one basket. 
you need you need to have diversity across the board mate you you have a fantastic corporate um Uh, company set there where you are so yes that's your number one focus but don't let the other stuff go don't let it go what's wrong with charging you know 25% more for the tourists in the area giving that the area is what was it 82% increase year on year would have been more than that does that help guys going through that I didn't want to I, I put it on the group but I know that some of you may read it and think, what the fuck is all this about? Well, I wanted to give you some clarity on what my view is and, and how I see and how I would use that information in that document. So, where are we? Uh, just, there's some other questions, I'll, I'll come back into that later. So we are October 28th, and in fact, we have, let me just have a quick calculation here. Let's do it on this one. So, uh, Halloween, have you got everything set for Halloween? I think we're less than eight weeks to Christmas. Eight weeks. Yeah, about eight weeks to Christmas. I don't like to, <laughs> I don't like for those who don't like Christmas. I don't like to uh, put the jubies up you, but yeah, it's coming. It's coming. So we are currently ending the month on Thursday. Your for November, December, it may be that November's a bit quiet at the moment, you know, but it will pick up. And this is why you need the diversity between both corporate or business and tourists. We've got some bookings that have come in for November, and you'll notice, let me just have a quick look. You'll notice with your bookings, uh, well, I've noticed that, if we look at, a lot of the bookings for November and December, are not local bookings, UK bookings. And mainly because most of those are booking.com. So there are still people traveling in business. We have a lot of Chinese tourists booking, especially in January and February. In fact, I can tell you now that all of the bookings that we have so far for January and February originate from China. So you need to start looking at your own insights of what you're getting booked because you can go on booking.com, don't forget, and do your specific target audience for China, which is what I'm going to do for January, February because they're coming in January, February. We're okay in October because we've had, you know, some, same in Oxford and I guess other areas too, is that we've had some graduations that happen in October. So we've done that there. 
November. I don't know if people will be traveling for Guy Fawkes Night or whatever it might be on November 5th. I probably assume not. But this is where your corporate people come into play because they're still traveling no matter what. Whether the weather's good or weather's bad, they still got to travel because they're out doing business. Um, you should have your Facebook group that you've got set up. Hashtag everything. The hashtag is how you get found. Um, I've just set up another group for my desk club that we're starting up in the next two weeks. It will be ready to go. Um, so if that's something that you're interested in, the desk club, it's going to be a serviced office business that we've set up. And I'm going to be franchising, if you like, to a certain extent, in that I will set up the website and do all the marketing. And then you will choose your own um, serviced offices, desk space, that type of thing. It's all going to be commercial leases, so you need some help. And uh, from there, I'll take a percentage for the marketing and bringing you into business. But you will be responsible for renting the property, furnishing the property. So basically, you'll be responsible for the upfront costs. If you want me to do the upfront costs, as in furnish the property, uh, then there'll be a different percentage rate that we'll work on. But I want to take this completely UK wide. And uh, it's, it's a business model that's growing super, super quick. And you need to get in at the bottom. Um, right like where we are now and this is again diversifying your business so for alex where you are with cam it's a great area to be able to do that so especially with what you've got there with your corporates and what essentially what i'm what i'm what i will be doing is ultimately i want a property where it's a commercial building and i can get some flats above so the flats above will be service accommodation and below will be serviced offices. Now, you're probably saying, ah, gotcha. So it's kind of going to be like a one-stop shop. In particular larger ones, it may be that when I'm talking larger ones, like 30, 40 desks and above, if you think about it, let's, let's, let's look at outside of London and we'll do 450 per month for a desk if it's long term times 30 desks. That's 13 and a half grand a month income. And your rent could be, I don't know, two or three grand a month. And that would include upstairs. And upstairs, you might get another five, six grand a month from that. So you should be looking at profits of anywhere between seven and 10 grand a month on something of that size. And when I talk about automation, we're going to put in systems and I want you to see, I'm starting off with a small one and I'm going to start it off and set up the systems and test the systems to make sure they all work for the bigger ones. And when I know that they work, I'll just deploy it in every single office wherever I can. Um, well, again, it, you need to look at, again, core. Is it central? Is it operational? You will need cleaners, the same thing. So it's kind of like you're sharing. You can, you can kind of share your resources across these because you can basically use your cleaners to go in and clean the property as well. You'll need to provide a coffee machine. You'll need to provide um, like, a, uh, like a printer, photocopy, all-in-one solution. Um, desktop PCs, you can get them cheap as chips, the Windows based ones, not obviously Apple. Um, for people wanting to come in there with and not wanting to spend any money on the setup, they're just going to rent the space. Now, we're going to do it much like you do if you think about a mobile phone contract, and you can do either pay as you go, it's more expensive, or you can go on a contract where you pay long term monthly. And the monthly ones will do a minimum six months. The pay as you go, you can come in and pay by the hour. And that will be meeting rooms that they can pay by the hour or desks. It may be that you are full, i.e. 
um, your, your desks are on a contract basis. However, what you do is you can use some workforce management, some clever stuff, and for the people who are deciding that they're not going to be away for two weeks, they basically put into the system away for two weeks, and you hot desk their desk by the hour or the day for that two weeks. So you're getting double bubble. Nice? Fucking great. Um, and there's no issues with very, very limited issues. And you make it 24 hours. So you can go in there whenever they want. It's all secured, obviously, with, with the proper door locking systems, and they'll get a they'll get a link and they'll they'll put their phone next to the lock, it will unlock, and if it's not if it's not uh, authorized, it won't open. And when their two hours runs out, it's gone. They're done. Or when their four hours runs out, whatever it might be, just use them some clever software to get to make this work. And it really can be 90% automated. The only bits that can't be is the cleaning, if you like, and you know the stocking of the the coffee and whatever it might be and you know however what you can do and what we do in HMOs you'll have a lead tenant so you'll have a long-term uh, company in there that, that is basically looking after your desk and you can say to them say look if you just take care of the stock and this and you know make sure everyone's happy and that type of stuff while you're here we'll give you a 10% discount on your monthly rate. Yeah, sure, I'll do that. And they'll let you know what's going on, Ash, yeah, or, or someone else who takes care of it, won't be me, you know, manager, mate, we've got this issue here, there seems to be the water coming in, whatever it might be. So, you know, they can take care of that, and that way you only have that one single point of contact. You don't want 20 people phoning you up, oh, we've got a problem with that coffee machine. So you just have, you know, there's, there's a way to sort these things. So that is the exciting next step for me in business. Um, any other questions, Emily? Yes. Uh, I won't be available after this call, no. But I will be after lunch, no problem at all. I have a meeting for an hour and a half from 10.30, so I need to get a skip on. <clears throat> okay, Expedia, Expedia. Uh, telling me guests cannot receive messages that automate from Tiki. Last week I sat on the phone with them and thought it was sorted. Today it is not. Uh, is everyone else handboarding or communications? I'm not. I'm sure not. Um, so if they're telling you that the guests can't receive your messages from Tiki, but then they're saying it's sorted, but it's not. What's the latest? Maybe we have a chat later. Let's just talk through what's happening. There's certain GDPR rules and that type of thing that, that they can set, and they just need to do that. Um, but, yeah, let's, let's look at it. It's not. Okay, well, let's talk later about it. Let's talk after lunch and let me know exactly what's going on there. Good, good, good. Okay, good, 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 good. I feel like I've been talking for hours. All make sense? Ah, um, thanks for the reminder, buddy. I've had a few messages from you about the uh, the options course. And the options course is all about how to find properties and nail down properties for limited money. Yeah, it's a pound. You can be on the contract, but you're going to have legal fees. There might be a couple of grand two, three grand, whatever it might be to, to do that, depending on the complexity of the deal. It might be 30 grand legal fees, but you're not going to be looking at those type of complex deals. We're talking, you know, a bit of land, a property, you know, maybe one of your flats or whatever it is that you're taking on that you want to then push into a lease option. So, and, and some of you have said, oh, it's £747 for two people plus they AT. Well, yeah, and I'll tell you what, if you go and do other courses out there, they'll charge you two and a half grand and, and, and more. However, 
Um, I've done a lot of tweaking on this uh, actually over my holidays. And for those of you who are on the mentoring, I will um, let you have the course for 297 plus that for two people. So if you want to meet up with each other, two of you can come if you've got no one else to bring, whatever it might be. And then, um, then hopefully that will make you happy. Unfortunately, the course on Saturday is fully booked uh, at the full price. So that is fully booked. And it will be from nine till six, maybe pushing out to seven. It's a pretty full on day. And uh, it's, uh, it's fairly intense. Good. So hopefully that helps. Yes, it helps one person. Thank you. It needs to be, it's all about your next step in this property journey, if you like. In It must be a strategy. You must have a strategy for long-term capital growth. Otherwise, you're just going to be cash flowing all the time and spanking the money on whatever it is. You need to have something to now put your money and invest your money in. And I'm trying to help you put as little as that disposable income into something to give you the highest return. Make sense? Good. Uh, we're uh, in books of BTC, uh, visibility booster. I'm also the cheapest in the area, anything else I can do. This is just for November. This could be another one of those little September ones we had, I think, Sam. Um, it will come. The bookings will come. You're in central London. You're in a key spot. They will come. Most of them will be business, so it may be those, you know, they're not booking until a few days before, but they will come. When's the next options course after this one? Mm, let me see. It will be on the 4th of January. I may do one in December. If you guys want one in December, let me know. But it will be in the first week of December. Actually, I can do one in December. Want to do one in December? The last service accommodation course is on the 23rd of November. For those two of you who want to refresh. And the refresh is a hundred pound a piece cash on the day. So December, okay, let me set one up in December and we'll do it. We'll do one in December. Now, the reason I talk about the, the long term stuff, you need to be, you know, like I said, you need to be doing something with the disposable money, not just spanking it on cars and stuff. And I'll tell you this, I just bought two new cars, right? I bought a Porsche and and I said to myself, it's a family Porsche, it's a KNS. And I'll tell you what, drive one. These things are unbelievable. Unbelievable. Especially if you get the S with all the with all the suspension and all the, the, the chrono sport. You've got to have the chrono sport. Porsche is not a Porsche without a chrono sport. Anyway. So I bought it and we picked it up the other day my wife and I, and they go through all the stuff, you know. Mr. and Mrs. Banff, I said, mate, just call me Ash. All right, no worries, Ash. And uh, it's a load of pomp and ceremony that I'm not really comfortable with. I don't get comfortable with all that sort of crap. And, uh, you know, it's it's almost like they want to let poppers off and shit. But fuck, man, I just bought a car, that's it. Just cool it down, sunshine. And... Uh, all these people are sitting around on these open desks. And I said, can we go and sit in an office? Because I ask you questions. I don't want to share my information. So they took us to the boardroom. Like, Where are you? My son was there. My son came with us. He was just blasting it. And 
my wife was happy, you know, and and I said, look, it's this is this is your car. You have this car. I bought it, but you have it. Your car. And I've driven it. Yeah, it's a bit of fun, you know, but it's her car. And the simple reason is, I didn't get. I'm trying to think. Did I get excited at all? No. Well, what I say, you're looking forward to picking the car up. Yeah. It didn't excite me one little bit. Not one little bit. So then I went out. I've got a, a Land Rover Defender, right? A black one. So I said to myself, right, I'm going to treat myself and I'm going to get a new car, but I'm going to get a bigger Defender and I'm going to get one that's all tweaked up. And the engine's this. Got it all, you know, all custom interior and everything. And for me, I was more excited about that. And that, but that's because of choice. And you know, I was thinking about a month ago, I'll get myself a bit of a sports car. Nah. That's gone. Out the window. Out of my head. Out of my senses. It's just I think more now, and I don't know if it's because I've had kids or got kids. But the priorities changed, and I don't give a shit about cars, to be fair. I used to think I did, but I don't. Because I look at a car as a waste of bloody money. And the reason I bought the Defenders is because they don't lose money. My last one, I've sold the black one. I lost like a thousand pounds. I did 25,000 miles in it. I've had it for four years. I lost a thousand pounds because they hold the value. Not a classic car, but kind of getting there. Especially now the new ones out, they've, they've gone up even more in value. So for me, it's like, yeah, you spend, I mean, a Porsche, the one that I got, you're looking six figures. And at all the time I was like, mate, that's like, even if I just did buy to that, that's like two and a half new houses that can bring me some income. But it's going to increase in value. You know, on the mortgage and that type of stuff. So I was like, this is why I'm, I'm trying to help people get into the long term wealth bit. And I know some of you are like, oh, it's fucking hard work. It's hard work. The service accommodation, go do this. You need to have two strategies a minimum of one cash flow and one long term wealth creation. It doesn't matter how old you are doesn't matter because if you've got 10 years left on this planet you can buy a property now or take control of a property in 10 years it's worth twice as much hand it to someone your son your daughter your husband your wife your uncle your auntie your best mate whoever it doesn't matter create some sort of legacy cash flow gives you ability to take on these properties and what I teach you in this course is to take on a property that not only gives you long-term capital growth but it also gives you Cash flow, best of both worlds. Rent to buy and rent. Rent to buy to rent. So not rent to rent, rent to buy to rent. There's a new one for you. So good, get stuck in. Go and do it. But remember, you need that long term as well. Especially if you've got kids you, that you want to take care of like me. And I'm thinking more about that now. And I'm thinking more and more about that, which is why I like businesses that I don't have to work in. I like businesses that I can work on. So then I can go and do my other thing and take on other business, other properties, because property is still number one king for me and always will be, always has been, always will be. So I have more of a focus now on property. Fuck the cars. My, my focus is on the properties. That's what it's about. So... Take it easy. Have a good day. I've got to go. I'm late for my meeting. Don't worry. They'll wait. And, uh, yeah, chat later. Bye.